Well, everyone, the ones who are not in this building, I talked to Mother Nature, and it's going to rain outside on them. Hmm. <laughs> Thank you so much. It is a glorious day, and usually people on days like this, when we had such a, a miserable winter and weeks that, that we want to stay outside, but you know what? You'll be able to stay outside in, this afternoon. It's very crucial that we begin our celebration of this beautiful city, the heritage we have, the culture we have, the ideas, and it's going to take some time. So I don't want it to be politics. I didn't want it to be run by one administration. I wanted it to be the community. So I brought it out and said, you know what? It's not about me. I live here. I have one input. And I want every single citizen who wants to give input to be able to say, this is what I believe Gloucester was about. This is how Gloucester is. This is part of, because you know what? We don't know everything about Gloucester. We keep finding new and new things about Gloucester. We're going, really? And it's just, it's just amazing. So I, um, I ask people, and it's always the same people, thank you all for coming, so you're always the same people who love this city. And if you see um, our past mayor who was there for the 375th, and Bob Gillis who doesn't know how to say no, and Ruth, and I just don't let her say anything. She's just not allowed to say no ever, 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 ever. And you know, my uh, community developed director, Jill Cahill, Today is the beginning, and this is right here, your board um, chairs. They, when Bruce is not around, or Bob's not around, or Ruth, one, one will be around to help us, to help us make this the best. Unfortunately, the best costs a lot of money, so we have to start way ahead of time what we want to do. So bring your ideas, they have some ideas, and we're gonna hopefully that everyone, because some people really can't hear, that repeat your questions or repeat your ideas so everyone can hear it and we'll take notes. And then we'll, this is just the beginning of one meeting. So believe me, we're gonna have all the opportunity to make sure that when we celebrate the 400th, it's all of ours. Whether, we're, you know what, whether I'm mayor, but I'll still be a citizen. So, and that's what counts, is the citizens. So thank you very much, everyone, so much. You have no idea that to see this room filled like this is like, I'm so excited. So I'm gonna shut my mouth and I'm gonna go. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. There you are. We have a citizen who'd like to um, lead the national anthem. So if everybody could please stand. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Ladies and gentlemen, Ho, oh, oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and the bright stars through the perilous fight all oh, the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets great were the bombs bursting in air gave a proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave Oh, the land of the free and the home of the brave. God bless America and God bless Gloucester. Thank you. Thank you. That was a nice surprise. <laughs> okay, um, and just a couple housekeeping tips before we move on. Um, there are there's some coffee, water, and some treats in the back of the room, as well as restrooms are back here, through that door. Um, and I'm gonna hand it over to our tri chairs. Thank you for coming today. I have lived in Gloucester pretty much my whole life. I was born in New Brunswick, Canada, but my parents were from Gloucester, and my father's relatives are on the monuments down at the statue with the man at the wheel. So my family goes way back, not, I don't think 100 years, but back to the 1600s. Thank you to the mayor and the city staff for helping us organize the chairs and the tables and getting the building open. I'd like to thank 
Julie Geary from Classic Cooks, who brought all her cookies. Uh, Rick and daughter Noonan from Cape Ann Coffees for the waters and other baked goods, and Dio Braga of Dunkin' Donuts for the coffee. I see the 400th anniversary celebration in 2023 as a 365-day event. 365-day event. That means It's not just a parade, it's not just a ball, it's whatever people think would be a good idea. And see this flyer that we put all over town? This is your celebration, and that's why we're having this meeting, and we're planning to have several more over the next few years. Um, in 2023, Gloucester Rotary Club celebrates its 100th anniversary, and the Cape Ann Museum celebrates its 150th anniversary, I mean, what other organizations are celebrating an anniversary that year? We need to know that. How far back does your family go? Uh, Lynn Parisi, where are you? Uh, your family goes back? So there are a lot of families in Gloucester who have been here for 400 years. Let's find out who they are. I keep talking about alumni events. I would love it if the Gloucester Little League had a, an um, alumni event have the 50-year-olds and 75-year-olds have a baseball game. Who has a family, again, that goes back 400 years? We need to find out who those people are. Um, the people who've been working on this committee for the last year or so, could you just raise your hands or stand up, be recognized? Thank you for all you do. <laughs> Bob Gillis, who doesn't love Bob Gillis? <laughs> There's a list out there. <laughs> yep. Hi, everybody. Thank you for coming today. Uh, I don't go back as far as Ruthie or Lynn or Shirley. Um, first generation, but uh, I love this city just the same. And Lynn came up with a great idea. Really, it's about everybody in this room, everybody in the city has their own timeline. If you moved here six months ago, you need to be part of this celebration. That's what it's about. And people, a few people have asked me, so um, what do I need to do today? Um, what, what are you going to tell me to do? I'm not going to tell you to do anything. This is about the community um, putting ideas up on a blank slate for all of us to share in, and we're hoping for a great celebration five years down the road. Thanks so much. <laughs> Former Mayor Bruce Toby. For those who don't know. And, and you're better off if you don't. Terrible, terrible times, terrible. Uh, one of the great honors of my time as mayor, well, first of all, one of the great honors of my life was to be the mayor of this community, but one of the great honors of that time was to be sitting in that chair for the 375th anniversary. Um, if folks look back on that, and I'd like you all to, from the point of view of giving today maybe a little bit of context, what we tried to do was important. We had a citizen-driven series of events over the course of a year that t tried very hard to touch every element of the community's fabric, and in three ways, heritage, present, future. Where have we been? Where are we now? Where might we go? And by the way, let's celebrate that in the course of the year's events and reflections and observations. Now, it's always risky to name names, but I can tell you that the citizen, it was citizen driven, it wasn't mayor driven, it wasn't council driven, citizen driven, and some of the folks who were in the forefront, John Bell, Gap and Sulafada, David Rose, Roger McNeil, Jim Carquette, fresh off the waterfront as our harbor master over a period of years. And they put together a team that's going to be built, I hope this one will be built just as that one was. Hundreds and hundreds of people weighing in, having ideas, helping in the effort that produced a remarkable year that we really did, looking ahead, intend to be something of a dry run for the 400th. A little bit audacious, but the structures in some interesting ways still stand. For example, in 1998, we set up a nonprofit corporation, Gloucester Celebrations. That housed that event. That will house this event. And just as it did a great job 
with the 375th. It's gone on to do many other projects in com the community, the World War II monument, the Cenotaph. We've kept it alive and vibrant and active. So we have that framework. Then we have the context and the framework of memory of what 1998 featured. It began in this room in early January with a launch party. What did we do? We celebrated music, dance, theater, literature, all through the performances and readings and actions of Gloucester folk who came forward that day and strutted their stuff to get a party going. And then on it went, in part building on all the events that occur every year in Gloucester anyway, but amplifying them to catch the spirit of that special year. We looked to the harbor and our fisheries and maritime traditions. We looked to the arts. We celebrated all of those things. We celebrated our sports heritage. We looked at our history, and in each case, took it to the future. In this room, in this room we did an event that brought national attention to Gloucester. Didn't look like this, and there's a picture, I believe, up back there, Lynn, that shows folk what this room looked like when it housed the nationally recognized celebration of American figurative sculpture as it worked its way through the artisans of Gloucester, the Walker Hancocks and the Manships and all the artists, building, by the way, on the legacy of the 350th. The former city manager, Paul Talbot, here with us today, helped put together. Museum of American, uh, uh, the Cape Ann Museum putting on a show of American uh, uh, Impressionist art, again, anchored in Gloucester. We can do great things, celebrate this community, and chart its course into the future, very dynamically. Today's day one. Please join us, stay with us, let's make this sparkle. Thank you all for being here so much. Okay, then I want to, there's many of our community leaders in the room. I want to acknowledge Councilor Pre Sen or Council President Paul Lumberg. <laughs> Ward 2 Councilor Ken Hecht is with us. I think Representative Ann Margaret Ferrante just walked in. <laughs> And I know Barry is here from Senator Tarr's office back there. And if I, I think I got everybody. Did I get everybody? Okay, and if you don't know me, my name's Jill Cahill. I'm the Community Development Director here in town. So what we're gonna do today, um, as the mayor said, this is not about politics. This is about how are we gonna celebrate our 400th birthday. Um, you can see two questions. We're gonna start at this one. Um, they're very similar to what you see on your seats. And we just want to brainstorm. We want to think about, we want to hear from you about what would you like to see happen during 2023? And we want to know there are no bad ideas. This is one of those exercises. Let's hear what you think. Let's hear um, what you might participate in. And that's the second part. What would you participate in or what would you help with? Um, this is going to take all of us. And, and as uh, Ruth said, it's a 365 day event. And so we're, we have lots to plan and lots to do and we need everybody's help. So we have two people with roaming mics, Lynn over here and Paul over here. Um, they're gonna turn their mics on and we are gonna go ahead and just start brainstorming. We wanna hear from you if you're not comfortable you know, speaking. We can also, you can write it on your forms. We hope that you'll, everyone will fill those out and turn those in. So I know Lynn lucky, has somebody who's ready to kick us off. Our lucky first winner here has to leave, <laughs> so she'd like to speak first. Hi everybody. Speak right into the mic. Peg Lico, I live in Riverdale. I was born at Addison Gilbert, and you don't need to know how old I am, but I'm old. <laughs> I watch Stop and Shop get built, okay? Uh, so I have had this idea ruminating in my head for, I don't know, Chris, what, almost a year now, and this is my vision. I think that we could recreate the codfish flake drying yards on a smaller version. I don't think it's very difficult to do. I've already got carpenters in mind to build such uh, flake tables, trays, whatever they're referred to. Um, but I think it could be almost a roaming um, kind of exhibition that we could take to different events. And I think it would be a way to acknowledge our history right from the get-go. If there was no cod, we all would have starved, you know, and now the cod is coming back and we can celebrate that. So 
That's my idea. Right. Codfish flake yards. Thank you. That's Thank it, you kids. so much. And I see someone in the back here, the, the nice gentleman who's saying for us. Hold it right up. Thank you. Thank you. Dennis Golden, Gloucester Lobsterman Emeritus and longtime resident, now moved north to Rockport, where I can be near the money. <laughs> But I th believe that R Gloucester should leave, as uh, Bruce Toby said, something for representing the past, present, and the future. And I'd like to say that for the 400th, America's port sails on. And I believe that a good uh, exhibit and uh, symbol tribute to the history, 400 years of Gloucester, would be to build them a centerpiece, which would be a masterpiece, because we have so many artists here in Gloucester, and stonemasons, and uh, gardeners, and uh, uh, florists, and so forth. But I believe we should ha could have a permanent schooner uh, built and uh, planted at Stagefort Park in the hillside, the amphitheater, where the, in back of it would, would be silhouetted against the hill and the ocean behind, and it would be a schooner built out of stone and flowers, which would be a permanent memorial for a long while beyond the 400th anniversary, but for the anniversary, it would be a centerpiece and a masterpiece for all to enjoy with pride. Thank you. Thank you. I love it. America's port sails on. It's a good one. He should be in marketing. Who else? Who's ready? Oh, we got one over here. Steve Cady. Uh, I have a couple of ideas as far as infrastructure goes. First one. Steve. De right into the mic. Down, downtown, permanent uh, public restrooms. I think we really need that. It's going to be an influx of people there. And the second one would be some sort of beautification of a uh, stage four park, if, if you could put some funding toward that entity. Last, uh, 375th, a lot of events took place there, and I'm sure it's going to be the hub of the 400th as well. Thank you, and I can let you know from community development, we're working on both of those currently. We're working closely with the Stage 4 Park Advisory Committee. I see David Dow, the chair here, um, and the DPW. We have our eye on Stage 4 Park and very cognizant of the time we need, the growth time we need also to beautify it. So we're working on it, and we'll work with City Council on that. Who else? Where are you, Lynn? We got a couple here, and then she'll come over here. I will. There, there. Uh, hello, uh, my name's Jerry Houle, and I go to a lot of sporting events in Gloucester, mostly the football, and I'm the guy that has that sign that says perfect. And, uh, and, uh, and the first thing I like to say is, uh, how about them cheerleaders in the city? They weren't perfect, they were absolutely perfect. They need a round of applause. They've been great forever. Uh, so my thing is, uh, 20 years ago, the Constitution anchored in Marblehead, and they said something about repairs, which they've done by now. And the next port they were going to go to was Gloucester. So that would, uh, I'd get a, another tattoo on my arm if they came into town, you know? I have one. I don't know how many older people in here remember down the fish pier in the 50s, they had the sailing ship that would take students around the world for a year and a half, and the name of that was a Yankee, and that's what I have on my, <coughs> excuse me, my arm. And uh, so that's what I think. If we can get the Constitution here, boy, that, that'd be something else, huh? So maybe people know about it, or they can look into it. That's what I have to say. Yeah. 
great idea. You're welcome. Hi, my name is Emily White, and uh, my, the Whites have been in the Gloucester oh, about this time 100 years ago, but the other families I'm related to are the Newmans who are related to everybody else. But So I really have a lot of the heart and soul of Gloucester, and I just moved back a couple years ago in and out all my life. Moving forward, I love the idea of historical reenactments throughout the year, uh, character reenactments. We've had a lot of famous people come through here, live here, stay here, create, and uh, that's very popular in certain areas, and get these actors reenacting, being Rudyard Kipling or being Edison. I think that would be phenomenal. I also feel costume reenactments. What did people do 150 years ago? They went to meetings, they went to socials. Why not recreate that? Have the formals, the balls, but make it open to the townspeople. Music all year round, kick it off with fireworks. We end it with fireworks, but I also want to see the whole town alive and celebrating and people in town. If you can have the costume ball, that would be phenomenal. Some people would love that part, but make it so it's affordable to everybody. And I love the idea of having our early history of the, the fishing set up there and what else did they do. You know, there's so much to do, but I really want to see a lot of pulling everyone into the community. Music, reenactments, balls, <laughs> fireworks, and historic reenactments. So there's my contribution. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. She wants to celebrate for sure. I like her energy. Get her I'm name. in. Yes. <laughs> and I just want to let everybody know the cameras you see are thanks to 1623 Studios. Thank you guys for being here as well. That way we make sure we don't miss anything. Hi, my name is Donna Radizoni. People probably know me from picking up trash. But one of my things is I think it would be great to have accessibility for everyone for kayaking, stand-up paddle boarding. I mean, I wasn't born here. I'm a girl from some of them ass, so I always came here. But the accessibility to show people how beautiful when you are out there on the water, going down by Rocky Neck is spectacular. Another jewel that I don't think we realize is the Hammond Castle. We need to use that more often. And please, let's keep our city clean because that is my thing right now. Thank you. And she makes a good point about um, places like Hammond Castle and some of the other nonprofits. Please, if you know a leader of a nonprofit who's not here today, we need, we want everybody involved. So, um, you know, let us know, reach out to us. Um, Lynn, where are you? Paul's next, right back here. Oh. Hi, good to you folks are holding this meeting. I'm glad everybody came out. My late husband, Phil Bolger, was born at Addison Gilbert. He ended up designing boats. He grew up near Montgomery's boatyard. He would work for 57 years, and part of the last seven years uh, was a concern about where the fishing fleet was going. And for Gloucester to celebrate its 400th anniversary, I think we need to get into gear making sure we have a viable fishing fleet, that we have a fleet that can adapt to the ecological and economic challenges. So this is not about music, art, uh, whatever, you know, cultural things that we should be talking about. We're talking about the, handing the city to the future, to the next generation. I had a chance last summer to give a talk to three classes at the high school with focus on our work. There's distinct receptivity, and I think part of that could be for Gloss to reinitiate what it used to have at Gloucester High, which was a boat building program because this is a harbor. This is not just a tourist place. This is not just to see things decay in the fishing industry or the harbor be slowly turned into something else. I think we should emphasize as to our strength. Every consultant has given us this counsel over the, last, over the last many harbor plan cycles for lots of money. These folks told us the obvious. Emphasize that you're good at. Emphasize your fully zoned assets. Make sure you've got the next generation. And work and network with local assets, regional lo folks who will collaborate, and even talk to folks like me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I see someone right here. Hi, I just want to know, uh, just a question, where we're collaborating with everybody from Gloucester, is that going to include like Magnolia, Lanesville, because there's an awful lot of history down over in Magnolia that I know of. Oh, fantastic. So, and I know that there's some stuff that, I don't know Lanesville very well, but I know over in Magnolia there's a lot. So, I'm just wondering if we're going to be able to include and maybe do something over in that area also. 
Absolutely. And as I said, this is everybody's celebration. We're going to try all of it. Um, and I want to say I'm, I'm not from Gloucester. I've lived here for 17 years. And to me, one of the um, absolute charming things about the city are, is exactly that, the villages and the cultures and how people settled and where they settled and the history that came with that. So I think, um, and I know from I've heard in our meetings that that is something that's been discussed often, so please join us, and we'd we'd love to. Absolutely, we should definitely have a party on Lexington F, or whichever type, or an arts celebration, or any other type of celebration. Absolutely, we this knew that this would happen; that other people would be spurred into ideas by hearing other people's ideas. So he has yet another idea, but we're going to hear from everybody at least once, and then we'll, I'll remember you, though. <laughs> oh, she was oh, next, actually. Yep. Hi, my name is Michelle Galanti. Um, one of the things that someone over here had previously mentioned about the reenactments and things, I'd like to see the schools be incorporated into this and perhaps through these years coming up, education, you know, right from kindergarten all the way up so they learn about our heritage and everything and then have them be involved that way, show where we've come from and then maybe even a goal from that is what do you envision our future to be? What do you expect to see as you become older and become, you know, the leaders and things of the communities? Absolutely, thank you. Yes, we all, I have kids in the schools and I would love to see them involved. I'm sure everybody who's involved in schools. Do we have school committee members here today? Did I miss any? Then we'll make sure they're at the next one. Who over here was next to you? Jen, with okay. a pretty yellow it shirt on. You. Okay. No, I could see you, I just didn't know it was you. You missed the hair. <laughs> okay. Hi. I'm Jennifer Gouladamaro. I am a fourth and fifth generation Gloucester girl. Um, and I'm actually going to launch off of what was just said. I think uh, an educational component that runs throughout the course of the year. The point of any, uh, any kind of event is to evoke an experience, a feeling. So anything that we can do that really brands the whole celebration throughout the community in, in terms of, you know, right now the um, freshmen, at Gloucester High School just did a, in the history program, just did a scavenger hunt, and they were given photographs, and it was like a team effort with parents, and we had to go and dig up, like figure out where these things were, and it caused kids to look at things from a totally different perspective, and also to have an understanding, so it was a fun thing. But I think it could be overlaid into the art programs and things like that. Secondly, I also think that if this is going to be a year-long celebration, and we are gonna overlap, I'd like to see the the, celebration logo, the brand carry through, you know, the signs downtown that go up in the summertime. Everything should say 400 years. There should also be a social media campaign that, that backs up to that so that everyone from children up is really experiencing it in every touch throughout the course of the year. Everything that they see, whether it's on social, whether it's this Gloucester Rocks program, things like that. We're a very innovative community and I think if we can embed that with our youth from go, then it will, the feeling will transcend all the way through to the little people who will be here for the next one. Thank you, thank you. Innovative and authentic, those are two of my favorite words that describe this city. So, oh, we have somebody over here. Hi, I'm uh, Pete Souza, I live on French Street. I was born more than one. No? The mic. There you go. Need a mic. That way you'll be on camera. <laughs> uh, Pete Souza, I was uh, resident, I am a resident of uh, French Street. Um, I just thought of something unique the other night after I read what was going on. And it would be really nice for this is 400 years if maybe we could entice the Mayflower to maybe kick off a festival for us and visit and uh, bring in period garb because I know some of these folks and Stefan knows them. And um, it's a potential if we could get them to basically come into a, uh, you know, in a, into a harbor like the vessel that probably came here for about the same period, it might look really cool to start off the festival with something like that. Just, just an idea. Good idea. Thank you. Thank you. And Good Plymouth idea. is celebrating their 400 the year before us, Plymouth is. And I know. Um, yeah, Ply Plymouth is in 2020. 2020. Plymouth and P Town are 2020. Gloucester is 2023, obviously. Salem, 2026. Boston, 2030. And then there's other communities in between. Just as an FYI, um, the state of Massachusetts has an initiative called Mass 400, and we're part of that. And it goes from 2020 to 2030. And what those of us on, that have been meeting with the state part of the thing in Plymouth 
have been um, talking about is this thing in the hotel world called compression. And what that means is no one has enough hotel rooms for a huge event like Plymouth's, P-Town, and they're not the same community, obviously, um, for all the people that want to participate. So we already know that we will have people up here from Plymouth and P-Town that want to do the fun stuff in Plymouth all year. So it's kind of a you wash my back, I'll wash your sort of thing. So following up on what Pete said, there's already a collaborative effort between those communities between 2020 and 2030 to work together, and that could be a fabulous thing, like what Pete said. It's those kind of collaborative ideas, and I'm, well, I don't know where Ann Margaret is sitting, I saw her earlier, but those are the kind of ideas that will get us money to be able to do fun stuff like that. Because we're not insular, we're not the only ones doing this fabulous thing. It starts in Massachusetts and it will keep going across the country. So Plymouth and P-Town are the first and then we fall in after them. Thank you, and I see Captain has a microphone here and then you, counselors. Okay, good morning, uh, good afternoon. I'm Stephan Edick and I like the, uh, very much like the idea of the Constitution and Pete, I think that idea about Mayflower is spectacular, but <clears throat> uh, many of you may not know that that giant fleet of tall ships from around the globe that gathered in Boston last year was on its way to celebrate the 400th anniversary of Quebec City. And so I'd like to, to take the old sailing ship idea one step further because Gloucester's significance as a port city is something that's known worldwide. And uh, so I would like to see a tall ships festival with, uh, with a fleet of dozens of ships from around the globe um, hosted by our own Schooner Adventure. I love it. Yes, yes. <laughs> Counselor, do you have a microphone? All right, let's hear it. Ken Heck, Ward 2. Um, well, great ideas. I, I would volunteer right now to try to understand what happened in 1623. That is the Dorchester Company. I mean, everyone knows the Plymouth, they came over, they had a turkey, you know, that story. What is our story? I don't know. I know, but I mean really in depth so that we can unfold it even more. So uh, that's what I'd like to do so we can have a whole bunch of things that we can relate to. And Peter, your idea is great. You stole it from me, although what I want to do is instead of having to say Mayflower on the back license plate, I want it to have Dorchester Company, you know, so maybe we can, you know, something like that might be fun. Also, in the Gloucester spirit of humor and tongue-in-cheek and joking, I think there might be a little room in here somewhere for the date 1606, uh, 19, uh, yeah, 1606, uh, right? Which was, anyone know what happened in 1606? Any of your guy named Champlain? Someone behind you knows. And what year was that? And what do you name our port? Can the you boat port. Thank you, can you the repeat boat that? The port, what I'm saying is we can have some fun with this in that 1620, 1623, 1630, oh, wait a minute, 1606. I'm just saying, <laughs> have some fun with it, you know, and, and to say there actually is even a history of Gloucester prior to 1623. Thank you. Thank you. All right, you guys are doing great. I'm actually, I have to say, I'm very impressed with how many people are here. I see somebody else, great. Um, I'm <clears throat> Sarah Van Onken, and I've winterized the house that was in the family over a hundred years. So then I came here and, and taught, and I was teaching during the 375th. And I s wanted to answer your question on the um, different areas of Gloucester. It's not just Gloucester. We have Rocky Neck, we have Magnolia, we have Lanesville and Pigeon Cove and it goes on and on. And I had talked to someone before this that I think that's where we should start is dividing all these into smaller groups right away, right away, and see how many you can get out in your little section wherever you are, whether it's Bayview, just pick that little section, see what you want, the history, of just that particular area. The part I focused on in, um, at the, for the 375th was in the literature for children. And there is so much out there. And Laura Ventimiglia 
who is retired like myself, has just written a book about the fiesta for children. There are so many children's authors there. And what I did, and I hope the schools will continue, and I'm going to get right in there with the schools. Uh, that's one of my first things to do. Um, get into your schools. We have the stage company now, which has a children's theater group. And um, I know Heidi will gladly take anybody's book, even a Burton book from Rockport. <laughs> but um, there are just so many wonderful authors. And to look back on Jill and the Apple Bird Tree and the, the witch stories that come out of that area running into Rockport, it's a fabulous thing to do with children. And this is what I hope to do with children. But I think we have to start developing our program here instead of having all these great ideas is to have little areas start <coughs> Develop that maybe over the summer, two months. Give yourselves two months and look at that. I know we have somebody here who has over 4,000 postcards. And I just myself did a postcard, uh, postcard uh, project for the King of Thailand's Birthplace Foundation which met last year, or the six, uh, 2016. And uh, I had posters similar to those in the back. And I did all the hotels of Gloucester, how it must have looked when he came here. All of Bass Rocks, how it developed. And all those old homes. And you'd be surprised if you look at the wonderful job that's been done in the back shore at developing the houses as they had to be revamped after over a hundred years. If you look at those, a lot of people did a lot of work to be sure that they looked pretty much the same. So having something that's before, something that is after, put pictures together, and I know there's a lot of help in that. Um, it would just be wonderful. But start it small, that you have somebody from each one that nobody's left out. Each one of those little communities, the Finns are working on it right now in Lanesville. I've just helped develop the one in Bass Rocks. And I, I think there's a lot there to be done. Thank you. I think we have our first volunteer. <laughs> I'm pretty sure she said she's going to help. <laughs> Coming this way with a microphone. We'll go here and then, then there. Go ahead. Hi, Isabel Pett, um, granddaughter of Dr. Mo Pett, daughter of Arlie, niece of Barry, who's somewhere back there. Um, I think a series of monthly workshops throughout the whole year would be great. How to care for your motor of your boat, how to bait and care for a lobster trap, repurpose an old sail, take a fish and fillet it, but then turn the rest into fertilizer. We have a lot of people who compost in the city. I also think we should start a composting program. Um, but workshops monthly, I think, would be great. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Thank you. You got one. Um, Mary Rhinelander McCarl, I want to remind everybody that there are 15 wonderful quilts the great big applique quilts of the 15 neighborhoods of Gloucester. And if we want small scale neighborhoods of Gloucester, my good Lord, we'll uh, no skinny dipping in the quarries in Lanesville and uh, <laughs> the Wizard of Oz in uh, Anasquam. And we've got tremendous ideas that are already in visual form that were made at the Senior Center under Junie Van Dyke. So keep that, they look wonderful hanging here, um, keep that in mind as an inspiration for a lot of the neighborhood materials. Great. Thank you, thank you. And maybe we'll host one of these public meetings at the Senior Center. I think that would be a good idea. Um,
All right, we have someone over here. Thank you. Hi, I'm Guy Fink. I'm uh, blowing. I'll start out <laughs> there. I've only lived here 11 years, and I find it absolutely mind-boggling to be living in a community that's almost 400 years old. It's fabulous. Uh, there's two things that uh, struck me that I would like as a blow-in. One is walking tours throughout the city and the island led by people who can talk about the 400 years of history in that particular spot. Uh, I'd love to go on every one of those. Um, and the other is I'd like some really nice t-shirts. It's crass, but with the artists that we have here, I think we can have some beautiful uh, mementos prepared that people could purchase and help raise money for this and also be a, a really nice uh, memorandum of the 400th. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Over here. Oh, can I hog it? <laughs> we should, wait, I'm gonna. Hey, I passed it. <laughs> next go around. <laughs> Who was next? She must be serious, she's coming up. Is this on? Yep. I'm, I'm being, uh, I, I can't hear through this. So I if, wanted to if be people here talk right into it, you where can hear. I can be lip, lip read as well. Um, Ann Rhinelander from Connecticut. But for 16 years, we, uh, David and I, worked on a um, preservation based economic development, which culminated in a nine state march from um, uh, an actually na national historic route from. Uh, Newport to Yorktown and uh, at, at the time of um, the celebration of our uh, winning of the revolution and um, it strikes me that Gloucester has so many layers of heritage which must feed into one another economically if we preserve them so I have two visions one is that we go from an, in, this, today's not day one. Today's, how many years uh, times from, from 1623? And I would like our inventory of hardscape, historic sites, buildings, and events to be concretized, preserved, for posterity instead of kept open for continued development. And the other vision is that we have a restoration of our fisheries, our fisheries, and that we demonstrate not just the Mayflower and the Constitution, but the adventure and a fleet of future-based models for fleet development. These are all doable in the time we have and um, they're measurable. If those are not done, if we have an inventory that diminishes in this time rather than grows of hardscape and heritage sites, then we have a measure of the leadership for this event. Um, I think we're in a big adventure. <laughs> and oh, the other thing I'd like to see is they a um, spotlight, globe spotlight on NOAA based on the dead in the water film, the lack of accountability, the cruelty, the destructiveness of NOAA's behavior should be highlighted and reversed. And we can reclaim this harbor and our fishing industry from the petrochemical industry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to have you give it right back there. Thank you. What else? How are we doing? I feel like almost everybody here has said something. Oh, we got another one right over here. He's coming to you. Right here, in the white. Thank you. Charlene, you after. You after. Hello. My name's Kimberly Voltero, and I am a, a newer to Gloucester person. 
I have a sightseeing tour company, so I have made the history of Gloucester my lifeblood, and I love it so much. Um, I, I really, I count on it every day, truly. And it's my passion to share that with the world. And the one thing, or there actually is a few things I'd like to see done, but um, it's really important to me that people don't come here and walk away only knowing about our beaches and about our statue. And yes, I want us to celebrate all around Gloucester for sure, but I also want others to know that we are celebrating. And so I have a few ideas, and one of them actually is as old as 100 years. So on our 300th anniversary, Stacy, who was responsible for Parks and Recreation, thought it was important for us to have that beautiful boulevard so that everybody could enjoy that place. And he also thought that Fisherman Memorial would be a really great thing to commemorate the 300th anniversary. And I think it being 400 years, we should have that same kind of lasting presence of this celebration. So as much as I believe in having parties and I'm the first one to celebrate and have bands in my home, I just think we need something that is more lasting, that brings people back and allows us a place to enjoy as we probably all are enjoying now the tulips that are coming alive on the boulevard. So that's one, is a lasting presence of our heritage that is also a symbol of our future. The second thing is, and I love the fishermen, again, very important, but there are other things that are happening here that have always happened here, such as our innovators, Hammond, 400 plus patterns, and Bird's Eye, he had I don't, 200 or so patterns, and we you know, thank him, of course, for frozen food. And there are so many of us who live here in Gloucester who have also invented or created something. And I think the guy who's doing the condos down at Thatcher Road invented the, um, the little bumpy things that are on the sidewalk. Okay, it's not like you know all over publicized that everybody needs that little thing, but it's important to a lot of people. And there are a lot of those inventions that live within our cities all over the island. I know it's not really an island that was a created bridge, but it, it lives here and we should find a way to promote that and find a way to create perhaps it's that lasting thing. I don't know whether it's the lasting thing is going to be on innovators, but um, I personally like innovators because that's very much about the future. Um, the other thing I think was important is publicity. And I love the t-shirt idea. Um, I, you know, I, I love the children getting involved and coming out in masses to welcome visitors and welcome residents and share those stories. We have a wonderful television show. I'm not a tuna fisher, fisherman, however, 134 languages that thing is translated in. So that goes everywhere. Could we somehow convince them to have a 400th anniversary party or some 400th fish that they have taken out of the water? I'm not sure. But that does go far and wide. As well, the perfect storm. I talk about the perfect storm on every tour that we give. People recognize the perfect storm. I know we didn't do a very big celebration on the 25th anniversary. We had something, but I didn't catch it on TV. It wasn't a lot of newspaper coverage. There's maybe an opportunity to get George Clooney back. That's selfish. I would just like to see George Clooney. <laughs> but it's an opportunity to get him back, and maybe that would help with some publicity again. And I know it's not all about publicity, and I know it sounds self-serving, but truly, I want visitors here because it is such a shame that everybody goes to the Cape. And when you talk about the Mayflower, you're killing me. That's still the Cape, the other Cape. So that's the wrong Cape. It's the wrong Cape. And whatever we can do to encourage more people to understand what we know, and I know a lot of my neighbors, they don't want more visitors. Good Harbor Beach is totally full right now. We don't really need more people on our beaches. So let's get people off the beaches, into our art galleries, into our museums, onto our fishing charters, onto our whale watch boats. Okay, they're already on the whale watch boats. But let's just get them all around town, shopping in our shops, and enjoying really what the people who leave here are saying is, I wish I knew this when I first got here. 
So let's help them find that when they first get here. And if we can get any funds from the state to do this and do something that is lasting, now is really that opportunity to get together and agree. And yes, we can still have parties. Thank you. And I heard a lot of good ideas in there, some of which, and we got one back here too. Um, that's okay, you go here and then there you go. Um, sponsorship, ideas about sponsorship, ideas about telling our story far and wide. Those are all lots and lots of good ideas. Thank you. My name is Charlene Delaney. I have been uh, volunteering in visitor services for over 12 years. Stage Four Park, the Chamber of Commerce. I've talked to a lot of visitors, seen a lot of visitors. One of the things that I think is very important, there's so many books written about Gloucester and for Gloucester. In my own private library, I have 400. I have all of Joe's books. <laughs> I love talking to Joe when I first moved here 17 years ago when I used to walk by his house every day and he would ask me why. <laughs> Uh, I think there's so many wonderful things in those books and so many things that we need to learn about this city. I've been coming here for 46 years. The first time I ever came here was the first date with my husband and he took me around the back shore and said this is the most beautiful place in the world. I agree. And I think that that's what we need to see. We need to see all the history that's here. I'm a history major, so I love history. I love reading about history. And there's some fabulous history here. And I'd be glad to share my library, and I think there's plenty of other people that have great Gloucester libraries, too, that would probably be glad to share theirs, too. And I think that's something that we need to put out there. And I want to say one thing about visitors come here, and one of the things they like most about this city is the working harbor. They want to see the working harbor. They love walking the harbor walk. A lot of the plaques have, are missing along the harbor walk now. We need to put those back. That's our history. We need to keep it clean. Uh, when we cleaned last week, I chose to clean the harbor walk. It was a mess. You know what? Three bags of trash later, it looked a lot better. We need to pull the weeds along it because every day at the chamber, we send people on the harbor walk because that's what they came to Gloucester to see. They came to see the schooners and the fishermen and talk to fishermen. They love going to the marina to see Wicket Tuna. We need to celebrate these wonderful things that we have here. There's thousands of tourists and thousands of people coming here that I've talked to over the years. I love this place, and I think we all need to love this place. Thank you. Thank you. And I can speak a little to the Harbor Walk. The Harbor Walk is something that we're currently we're working on right now, a maintenance plan for the Harbor Walk. I'm coming right back to you. Um, just to follow up on what Charlene and a few other people have said, um, what we've been talking about in the committee um, in the past is that all of this celebration is, has been said before. It's all about all of us who live here. Whenever you came here, that's your part of it, whatever you want to do and all that stuff. Just to tamper the tourism part of it a little, because again, I count myself among a legion of uh, tourism zealots bringing visitors here. However, all of our celebration needs to work for all of us first. If it works for us and we're having a blast and it's awesome and everybody is happy and passing all our, our legacy to our children and all of that, Visitors are going to love it even more than us. So we will benefit from this with tourism. This is not a tourism thing. I, God won't strike me dead, I hope, but for saying that. But it really is true. This isn't a tourism thing. But think about Plymouth and P-Town. P-Town is about ready to sink from all the visitors. Now, really, I mean, you think we go round and around in circles on the island. Think about if you lived in P-Town. Oh, my God. So they're like nervous wrecks because of all the visitors they anticipate. 
Remember a few minutes ago I talked about compression? People are gonna stay in different places. People won't mind traveling 50 miles, 100 miles. If your family is having a family reunion to celebrate your heritage and everybody's coming from around the country, they won't care where they stay. If they have to drive from upstate New York to here, they'll come. Thanks. So just wanted to temper that a little bit. Thank this you. This isn't Thank all you. about tourism. Authentic Gloucester, I think that's part of all of it. Here you go. Thank you. Hi, thanks a lot. So my name is Larry Oaks, and um, I'm the youngest member of a family that's got its roots here going back about 100 years. So I'm a newcomer, too, like you. Um, um, I4C2, or whatever the parcels designation is down in the middle of town, it just strikes me in listening to all these good ideas and thinking about that parcel that's kind of been a question mark for 10 years, that five years maybe is enough time to figure out what to do with it, or maybe, uh, maybe it means that the committee could put dibs on using the site and leveraging that open space to, to do something in support of this year-long event, kind of the way World's Fairs create infrastructure to support a big event like that. It just seems to me that it would be a, a missed opportunity to, to not do something with the parcel and or do something to support this event. So, and if it were done in the right way, maybe there's infrastructure that's left behind to support the waterfront after, after the year-long celebration is through. But imagine what you could do with, 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 um, with that site as kind of the anchor for downtown for this, for this event. So. That's a thought. Thank you. Two people over here. Leftover world spare stuff for me. Hi, um, I'm Rhonda Falloon. I'm the director of the Capian Museum, and um, we've been thinking about this uh, 400th anniversary for a number of years. And this year, the beginning of five years till the 400th, um, we just opened an exhibition called Unfolding Histories. Cape Ann before the 1900, and it's a collection of all of the major archival pieces from all of the communities on Cape Ann. Um, I don't know, when we're talking about learning about our community, knowing that Cape Ann has some of the oldest archival materials, manuscripts, Bibles, family letters, that, than any other community in the country, it really would behoove all of us to check this out. And um, so the exhibit's up and through September. We have a um, program called Five on Five, so we're free to Cape Ann residents on the fifth day of every month, so May 5th, June 5th, on through the end, through September. We would encourage all our, our Cape Ann residents to come through the museum and look at the archives from the city of Gloucester, from the library, from the museum, from Essex, Rockport, Manchester. It's just a really, um, I think, enlightening. It's it's not light and easy. You have to do a little bit of work to walk through it and see what we see what's there. But you will, I think, learn a lot and be incredibly proud of what where we live. And I think, and as we proceed to 2019 through 2023, the museum will be doing a number of programs and special exhibitions in preparation for the 400th. We're thinking about Winslow Homer next year um, for the 2000. 2023, we'd like to get do something called Sea from Shining Sea, where we borrow Gloucester paintings and artwork that's in every single state across the country. So um, there's a lot to be proud of and a lot of preparation and work that we can all do and all learn um, in prep preparation for the 2023. So thanks very much. Thank you. And the museum's a very good example of the partnerships, um, the community partnerships that are a really important part of, of this event. Hi, um, I'm Stephanie Benenson. I'm a third generation Cape Ann artist. Um, just sort of piggybacking on what Rhonda said, um, I'd love to see the city commission new uh, public artworks in multiple locations and um, engage some of the local nonprofits. I mean, we have the makers that have contemporary voices that can make contemporary pieces. And we have wonderful, I mean, we have Art Haven down the street. We have 1623 studios that could project video art. I think that that would be really exciting and something new. Thank you, Stephanie. And she's also being modest. If anybody came to Harbor Voices, the public art installation that was here this winter, the artist is behind us there who just spoke to us. Thank you, Stephanie. Hi, I'm Leslie Mello. I've been here for 18 years. I just have a, well, I've, I'm not very good at speaking, so excuse me. I am. I have um, wondering whether we could do some commemorative coins, come out every month, 
uh, depicting history of Gloucester. Maybe the kids can collect them and just have monthly coins. I think that'd be fun to have like the Gordons sponsor them or some of the regular establishments around Gloucester. Fantastic. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. How are we doing? We've been at it for a while, guys. I'm, I, I'm, I'm so thrilled. All right, we have one here, and then oh, we're on second time around after that, huh? OK. Hi, uh, my name is Elizabeth Matuccio. I am the director of operations for Luminarts. And what we do is we put on uh, light shows. If you've ever been to a Luminous in Boston, you know what we're capable of doing. We do a lot of uh, light projection and mapping. And a lot of the ideas that have been thrown out today, uh, the manuscripts and coins and everything, we can project those onto buildings. If you have a historical building that has been updated, we can take the blueprints of its original form and project it onto the form. So it's a way of bringing the past back with a with new technology. Thank you. Make sure you leave a card with Suzanne in the back. That would be great to have. Thank you. Thing in here in City Hall. Right. Where did I see someone? We have one over here and one, another one over here. Anyone that hasn't spoken for the first time yet, Peter? Anyone who hasn't spoken for the first time. We have here. <laughs> Just saying. Yep. I'll Up there in your Harley. Okay. Here we go. I'll work. Um, I'm coming back home to Gloucester. Um, what I was thinking of along the lines of everything else that you guys have, have talked about, and I think they're phenomenal ideas. I mean, you give them three hours, we'll be, in, <laughs> we'll be all set. Um, one thing was the art, um, you know, workable art, usable art. I've seen um, some towns do um, bike racks, you know, metal sculptures, but they end up being a bike rack. So, you know, along the maritime theme of a lobster trap or a buoy or a boat or, or the fishermen, and it's made out of metal bars, and they're all over town, but it brings, again, our maritime history, but then it's usable, because we want to encourage people to be biking and walking and doing everything around uh, the Cape, and it can be everywhere. They can be at all the beaches, they can be downtown, they can be everywhere. Um, the other thing, the businesses, the city needs those businesses to be engaged. So I think if the city, the mayor, would send a letter to all the businesses in Gloucester and ask them to incorporate some icon of Gloucester, I don't care if it's the fisherman or a boat or a lighthouse or whatever, um, incorporate that into their logo for the year. They can sell, like Cape Cod Ice can somehow put the fisherman in there with the snowflake in his wheel or whatever they do, but you know, it could be something that they could also sell and money could go towards funding something, but um, you know, everything from, you know, Webb to Cape Pond Ice to Gorton's. Of course, they already have the fishermen, but they could be unique. I don't know. <laughs> Thank you. And you have one right here. Thank you. Uh, Arlie Pett, a uh, couple of thoughts. This one, the cable company's here to, uh, going to rebroadcast this, I hope. One of the thoughts I had was that maybe you could uh, also uh, wrap it before and after with broadcasts from Beth Wellen's presentations on the history of Gloucester. And I think of two of, uh, she does Main Street, Waterfront, and I think the old hotels. Can you just repeat the name of it? Because Chris. Beth Wellen, W-H-E-L-I-N. Uh, -E she's, uh, she's from Gloucester, but she's the director of Manchester Historical. Okay, if you need to get in touch with her. But she's done a number of presentations that are already on video in the, uh, Cable company has uh, presented them. Uh, and some other thoughts that I had, uh, one of them is that um, people are talking about the working waterfront and you know, uh, the fishing industry and whatnot. We haven't had a, uh, an exhibit of uh, model ships, uh, fishing you know, vessels, uh, and that's the only way to you know, get a presentation of them. The last one, I think, is when the uh, Mariners uh, Union was uh, down where the Cape Ann Brewery was. They had a big exhibit, and they had maybe 75 ships or something, uh, ship models. And uh, we could do something like that uh, and have, you know, uh, so people can really see what, a, you know, a fishing vessel was and how they changed over the years. So. Great. Thank you. Any more first-timers? They are behind you, Lynn, right behind you. Hi. Uh, my name is Bob Whitmarsh. Um, I'm one of the water directors of the Cape Ann Symphony. 
Uh, you may remember uh, a number of years ago we uh, had a, a concert um, that uh, they choreographed it with the fireworks down on stage for a park. It was really a great celebration. Um, we were thinking about doing that a few years ago, and now we have a good reason to do it, and we have five years to plan it. But I'll bring it up with the board uh, at our next meeting and see if we can do an outdoor symphony, a free concert for the city for the 400th anniversary. Um, Thank you. Another volunteer. A um, couple of other ideas. I'm on the, um, um, the uh, historical commission. I'm a co-chair. Um, and, and very sensitive to the, uh, uh, the architecture of the city and the beauty of all the different periods of architecture. And I think that would be great to feature the architecture of all the periods of Gloucester uh, in this celebration. Uh, and also, um, Gloucester is a group of villages and neighborhoods. And I think it would be great to um, have kind of a celebration that features all the different uh, villages and neighborhoods of Gloucester. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. How are we doing out there? Anybody remember Arthur Fiedler and the BSO coming to Gloucester for the 350th? I worked on that. <laughs> Next. Thank you. Are we good? Now, all right. So what, we have one more back there. You. Sorry I'm late. Uh, I don't know what I've missed. Uh, there's a couple things I hope, and I'm sure it's been discussed already, we have a harbor walk in place, which has got to be as big a focus as uh, anything. Uh, there's a uh, group of us, obviously I'm getting to be an old duffer and signing up for something five years from now. Might be a little difficult. But uh, we uh, have looked back at a track uh, event meet that was held a long, long time ago. And we're gonna replicate that. Uh, still in the planning stage, a lot of work has to be done. And uh, one other thing that I'm thinking of, and um, vegging, which is a sign of old age. Uh, oh, yes, uh, the Around the Cape race. In the 350th anniversary of Gloucester uh, was made into a significant event. And this is before running became big time. But the winner was big time, Bill Rogers. And if you look at the uh, couple of guys that finished in the top bunch also, significant runners that went on to be one held the world into a mile record and all. So hopefully the uh, around the Cape race will have a significance. Uh, and maybe if Bill's still around, we can bring him down and he can be the starter or something. Oh, that's cool. Thank you. We do, we have lots of great races. Running and the Blackburn Challenge around the Cape. Where are we? Are we ready for second timers? Anybody who hasn't spoken who's ready to? And remember, if you're not comfortable speaking, we have, that's exactly what those papers are for in front on your chairs. So we have And lots it's of them. not like this is going to be the only forum. I mean, we, we still time. have time. We have an, uh, one right here. Oh. Eh, I'll, I'll run around. I'll run around. Paul, sit. It's all right. I'll run around. That's why she wanted this job. She wanted to run around. Hi, Ann. I saw your face. Well, at the 350th uh, anniversary, Cape Ann Museum had a retrospective art show that I believe was sponsored either by Gordon's or, or by Peggy Lynch. I can't remember which, but it was all summer. And there were very valuable paintings. In fact, they were so valuable, we hired a security guard for 24 hours a day while it was here. So I think that it depicted the history of Gloucester through, uh, through paintings. Uh, the other thing, maybe we should have uh, flowers at the at Grant Circle, spelling out welcome, city of Gloucester, with the dates, and have it changed every day. So I've seen this in a couple of other cities, and it's very impressive. Okay, thank you. Beautiful, beautiful way to enter the city. Thank you. I'm gonna go let a couple people go a second time unless I see any takers. Any other takers? Okay. I know I have three people who want to speak a second time. I'm closer to Jen. Here, so here, Jen, and over here. Okay. Perfect. We'll go there, there, there. I just can't seem to shut up. Um, one of the things that keeps coming up, I keep hearing, is we keep talking about 
walking tours and outdoor spaces and everything. I'm a big enthusiast of being outside. Um, it occurs to me, and every single day when I'm out on Rogers Street, what that stretch looks like if you get off the cruise. And this is not about tourists. It's about the experience of the working waterfront and what an eyesore that space is. I wonder if some of these, like the bike rack idea and the um, art exhibit that idea, could be implemented on Rogers Street. That stretch of fence, I mean, something that makes it visually pleasing so that when you are walking along the working waterfront, you are experiencing Gloucester in a much more vivid way that's replicative of, of our art and our working waterfront. The second thing I was thinking is, we're talking about the, having narrated tours. I spend a lot of time in the woods, and there's a lot of stuff that's out in the woods that is part of our history. Like if you walk up to Thompson Reservation, the original altar from the original West Paris Church is in the woods out there. So it'd be nice to work with open spaces to tie those together so that there can be a component of getting outside and having guided tours that explain what you're seeing behind the trees that's part of who we are. That's all. Thank you. And she's going to hand the mic right here. And then we're coming to you. Go ahead. Oh, uh, uh, what I was going to say is I, I do that pride stride uh, tomorrow. And I've done it for, this will be the sixth year. So I did it six years ago. I come in two hours and 40 minutes later, and I turned around, and there was nobody behind me. I was the last one. So the next year, they made the course shorter, and I turned around. There was a couple people behind me. And the next year, I turned around. There was more people behind me. Then more people. So... Uh, I do that tomorrow, and I only missed one day this winter not walking two or three miles, which is great for my age, and I feel good. And maybe uh, we could have uh, something with some kind of celebration, or Emeralds would say with a pride stride next year, we could jazz it up a little bit somehow for the city, you know. I love it, yes, oh, okay. absolutely. Maybe next year you'll raise money for the Gloucester 400 during the pride stride. <laughs> yeah, Pete Souza again. Um, I know we recognize Gorton's as uh, a leader in the, in the world of uh, industry, uh, but in 1973, a, a company that I was one of the original people that started with is, uh, was uh, Extreon and Varian. It is now Applied Materials. They're one of the largest leading material uh, semiconductor businesses in the world, and that's right in the city. And uh, I think it would be great to get... Uh, some of these businesses involved uh, that are high-end and have uh, global presences, uh, such as these two companies, to, to show their stuff. I think it would be great. Uh, the second idea I had was, um, if you look around Gloucester, there's a lot of stone, a lot of granite, and I would love to see the Lanesville quarries be represented also, and maybe have some type of display, a stone cutting. Uh, I've seen this done before in other places. Uh, not just Rockport had quarries, so uh, we've got our own. It's kind of cool. But uh, those are the other two things I had, but thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, yep, one more? Okay. She's coming around here. Did you say never mind? Because I'm coming, Isabel. <laughs> that too. Okay, I'm going to speak on behalf of my dad as well in a second, but um, uh, just one thing was that we're talking a lot about um, uh, outdoors, which is great because it's on our mind right now, thank God, but um, if we're talking about a year-round celebration, um, it gets very cold here and snowy and wet, so um, indoor-focused things as well. I mean, this room is beautiful, indoor architecture tour of important buildings maybe, but also um, I loved the innovator um, note about innovation in the community, so an innovator awards ceremony would be great um, for people who have come up with something amazing in the past couple of years. And then my dad was just saying that um, another town uh, in the Midwest did a 0.5K race, which I think is funny and quirky, so that would be fun too. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and I see we're starting to lose folks. So I wanted the other question we had on the when we started here was how can you help? What will you participate in? And I want to thank that I know there are people, and she was our first volunteer right up front here. Thank you. Um, 
So if people, we would love to have partnerships across the community. We'd love some leadership from Magnolia, from Lanesville, from all the areas. We're really looking for leadership from the nonprofits, from the business community, um, all of the above. You, we would, if you want to raise your hand and volunteer right now, you're my favorite kind of person. If you're not comfortable with that, there are sheets there. I see Councillor Hecht is ready to volunteer. <laughs> She's ready to volunteer. Thank you. Thank you. We've got some volunteers. So make sure... We either, thank you, that's exactly what we hope. Um, so either make sure that you come up and give us your name and we'll write it down here. We have papers on all of your chairs um, that Suzanne in the back on the way out will be collecting. Um, I don't wanna wrap us up if there's still some feedback here. Okay, yep. Yes, I represent a 66 year old business. And I want to emphasize what the lady over there said about the innovators, the doers, people who invent, who actually get things done on which everybody else depends on one way or the other. And Gloucester is America's oldest fishing port, oldest seaport. It means something very precious. Folks like you who have the high honor and privilege to work for us, you, you want to really make sure that as you represent Gloucester 400, that you really see that we have a sharp edge of innovation. We know how to represent ourselves the best. Uh, when I had a chance to bring the U.S. Navy to town, it was the first time in many, many decades. We built a 39-foot long boat. It wasn't just a skiff. It wasn't a dory. It was something that was really serious. We had the Navy in town four times. They came to visit. How to work with these folks matters because they're the most important marine industrial players on this globe, also the most important marine scientific players on the world. Absolutely. In the world. So when these folks respect you, when they come to Gloucester all the way from Virginia, not for me, but for our work, then I think we, this is a sign what we can do in Gloucester for our 400th to show an innovation-centric, ocean-centric mindset that leverages what we have for innovation, for creativity, for people who do, including with their own hands, as I had to as well. So I look forward to what you folks are doing. I'm glad that Mr. Sikuranza is taking notes. Yes, and, and uh, we have another note taker too, just so you, you know, much. so if you didn't see your idea, up here, we have another note taker here. Those are what those papers are for. Um, and more than anything, I want to make sure you know how, that, how to communicate with us. We have a email, gloucester400 at gmail.com. Um, we also have a Facebook page, gloucester400. Facebook.com slash Gloucester 400. Our website will be up. I believe we did Gloucester400.com.org. I don't know. But well, you'll see that. You'll find it there as well. Um, what am I missing? What else do we do to connect with us? Oh, the forms. I want to say thank you guys for being here. I have to say I am blown away by the participation on this sunny day that everybody came out. Is there anything from wrap up from the committee or um, Coach Rikers? Jill, uh, just just add on to what Jill said about the website. When we get it up running, we don't have anybody to do a website, just saying. So that's one of the things that we're looking for as well. Not just great ideas, which are fabulous. Every idea today was wonderful. But if you have the talents of, you know, whipping up a website and maintaining a website, or, you know, if you're skilled in, uh, if you got contacts in the outside world PR-wise, or you are a PR person, or any of those sort of things, clerical help voluntary-wise, um, all of that, you know, behind the scenes stuff. Time, is treasure, and talent. That's how we like to call it. important, right. We'll take it all. Time, treasure, talent. We need all the help we can get, and, and that's what makes it yours. If any of you uh, help with your alumni organizations, Gloucester High School, any of the sports teams, uh, high school football, high school cheering, uh, hockey, any, any of that. I mean, there's been some championship teams over the last 100 years or so, and if you help organize those um, groups, we need your information. And please take some cookies home. Yes. And if anybody wants to take a box of coffee, there's any left, go for it. And give yourselves a round of applause. Really, this community is unbelievable. I'm so lucky to be a part of it, and I thank everybody. Oh, Ruth's back. So I said earlier, there is no silly idea. I received an email about an hour ago from someone who said he was coming and then couldn't come, and he had a whole list of suggestions, which I sent to you. But one of them was to have a decorated bike contest for kids so that you get, you get that those younger people involved. So something like that, but it still takes someone to make it happen, and that's what we need people, that's why we're re reaching out for that. 
And thank you to our leaders. We have great community leaders and a steering committee started, but this is not a city run event. The mayor and the city council are obviously gonna be a big part of this, but this is, is your event. So please stay, stay engaged. We expect to have another one similar to this um, to take to the next step after Labor Day and it'll be um, most likely an evening meeting so we can also tap into a couple different crowds of people. Any last comments? I think we're great. Oh, one more. <laughs> Keep it clean. I'm on the one hour time again. In this morning, oh, thank you. In this morning, we were out by Friendlies. And does anybody know who owns Friendlies? That building? I do not. Because, yeah, because we were in the marsh picking up today. And that is the biggest thing people see. Cigarette butts on the road. Charlene will tell you the plastic water bottles. But one of the, if we keep our city clean, you, it, it's We got to start today. Yes. That's right. And so we, on your way out, if you see some trash, pick it up. Morning. Pick it up. Recycle.